Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. We have a freeze watch overnight tonight. Could be the coldest night that we've seen so far this season. I'll show you what it will feel like when you head out the door tomorrow morning. And we have several breaking news developments this noon in the investigation into a 16 year old who was shot by a Durham police officer. What the police chief told us in the last 30 minutes. Also, an organization charged with helping North Carolinians bounce back after natural disasters is under new leadership. What homeowners can expect. Well, that cooler air has arrived. You can expect breezy, cool conditions this afternoon, and then we dip to near freezing in some places tonight. Good afternoon to you. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. Thanks for joining us. We get a cool down, and then it's going to be downright cold. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner in the WRO Severe Weather Center with a look at our freeze watch for tonight. And covers the entire viewing area, so when people head out the door tomorrow morning down Fayetteville Street, it is likely to be near freezing, and it may be a little breezy, too, in the morning, which means it'll feel even colder. Folks are enjoying some sunshine, but it's a much colder day today than it was yesterday. Right now, 57 degrees and a bit breezy, too. It's a southwest wind right now at 16, but another front comes in tonight that's going to switch our winds to northwesterly and push in some even colder air. So 52 right now in Roxborough, 58 in Fayetteville, 56 in Goldsboro and Rocky Mount. These temperatures are around 10 degrees colder than they were this time yesterday. And then we're going to see a bigger drop over And back here in the WRL Live Center, some more breaking news this afternoon. The Illinois Supreme Court has overturned the criminal conviction of actor Jussie Smollett. He was accused of faking a 2019 attack in Chicago. The court found the actor had his rights violated by a special prosecutor's decision to try him after initial charges against him were previously dropped. In 2019, January 2019, Smollett claimed that two men assaulted him, shouted racial and homophobic slurs, and tossed a noose around his neck. The Chicago Police Department department later said that he had recruited two men he worked with to help stage the attack. He was sentenced to 150 days in jail. Uh, he has repeatedly denied these claims and maintained his innocence. Testifying during the trial, there was no hoax and he was truly attacked. A group of passengers sprung into action and stopped a man who allegedly tried to open the cabin door mid-flight. It happened during a trip from Milwaukee to Dallas. Passengers restrained that man with duct tape until the plane safely landed. NBC's Jesse Kirsch spoke with those people who helped restrain that unruly passenger. This morning, there are still unanswered questions after a man on board an American Airlines flight allegedly attempted to open the plane's cabin door mid-air. Several passengers quickly jumping in to restrain him. The only thing you could think about was, I've got to stop this guy. Doug McWright was in the front row of flight 1915 from Milwaukee to Dallas-Fort Worth Tuesday when he says a flight attendant told a passenger to return to his seat. He says, I'm getting off this plane. I need to get off the plane. According to a public safety report, a flight attendant had described the man as agitated, adding she placed herself in between the man and the door before he rushed forward, hitting her hard, injuring her left wrist and neck. McWright and Charlie Boris were two of the passengers who jumped in to help. Were you fearing for your life as this was unfolding? The fight or flight just kind of instinct came over. Um, and yeah, after processing and the situation was done, yeah, I'm very thankful to be here. One witness in the report recalling the unruly passenger had expressed he wanted to get off the flight because he was the captain. McWright says the group duct taped the man's feet and wrists some staying with him in the front galley until the plane landed. Four or five big uh, law enforcement agents came in and they just picked him up like it was a roll of carpet and, uh, you know, just carried him right out. American Airlines stating that safety and security is a top priority, adding we thank our team members and customers for managing a difficult situation. That it was. That was Jesse Kirsch reporting. The passenger is having a mental health evaluation. The flight attendant who was part of the attack was treated at the hospital for neck and wrist injuries. 
We have yet to hit the freezing mark this season. Tonight may be the night. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner walks us through the freeze watch and what we need to know. The entire viewing area is under that freeze watch, and we did see some spots, especially just west of the triangle, that were down below freezing overnight last night. Here's why we think it could be colder tonight. We'll have another front that comes through, and that will open the door to even colder air. So it should be colder tonight than it was last night. We had widespread temperatures from freezing up to around 40 degrees across our viewing area. Area. This is a look at what we're going to expect tonight. And when we say tonight, we really mean 7 a.m. tomorrow morning because that's when we see the coldest temperature. So 31 in Lewisburg and Rocky Mount, 32 in Wilson, 33 in Goldsboro, 31 in Roxboro, 32 in Clarksville and in Siler City. So from the triangle area northward, looking pretty solidly like temperatures will be down below freezing. And then it may be slightly warmer in some of our southern counties, 34 in Rayford, 35 Fayetteville, 34 in Clinton and Irwin, but 32 in San and in Robbins, we tend to have some colder temperatures in our southwest counties just because they're a little farther west and tend to be a little bit cooler. Beautiful sunshine out there right now, but we'll have a cold front that comes through this evening, and that front could bring some clouds along with it. I wouldn't expect to see much rain with it. We do have a very dry air mass in place, so um, any of this rain that's really showing up here on the model, which is a sprinkle or two, would probably evaporate it before it reaches the ground. At 5 o'clock, just a few passing clouds. That front moves on by and takes the clouds with it and our skies will be clearing and it will be turning colder overnight. It's certainly beautiful right now. We take a look at Apex and we are looking off to the west, not seeing any of those clouds associated with the front just yet, but it is a touch on the breezy side. Right now, temperature 57 degrees. That's about as warm as it's going to get today. And then after sunset, we start to drop into the 40s. Temperatures across the area, 57 in Southern Pines, 58 in Fayetteville, 56 Rocky Mount, 55 in South Hill. Around town, of course, the temperatures are going to hold right about where we are right now, mid to upper 50s. And it is, uh, again, as I mentioned, fairly breezy. Winds are gusting at 26 in Durham and Raleigh. The gusts are in the white box on the right, 21 in Southern Pine, 17 in Rocky Mount. The steady winds are anywhere from about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Right now, coming out of the west-southwest, but again, tonight it'll start to come out of the northwest, ushering in some of that colder air. Winds are going to be bouncing anywhere between about 15 to 20, 22 miles per hour on through the rest of the day. And the wind chill tomorrow morning, of course, because we will see some winds overnight. Easily 28 in Roxboro, 29 South Hill, 30 in Southern Pines, and 32 in Fayetteville and Clinton. So the feels like temperature tomorrow morning will easily be right around freezing. Now, a lot of folks are going to be lining the parade route on Saturday for the Raleigh Christmas Parade. Temperatures should be feeling a little bit warmer, upper 30s to low 40s. That's still going to be really chilly, but uh, of course it's not going to be feeling like upper 20s, which is what we'll see tomorrow morning. So bundle up. Uh, the sunshine will be with us on Saturday. It should be a, a really beautiful day just to make sure that you're dressed warmly. We have a bit of a warm up in our forecast for early next week, but then things could change a bit by the time we get to Thanksgiving Day. I'll show you the pattern that will change toward the end of next week coming up. Elizabeth, thanks. Raleigh is requiring participants of this year's Christmas parade to sign a waiver. Coming up on our news at four, the additional changes happening to keep people safe. And at five, even as inflation cools, credit card debt soars. 500 Sides' Keely Arthur explains why you should avoid opening a store credit card this holiday season. But still ahead this noon, if you're looking for ways to cut your grocery bill, adopting a plant-based lifestyle might be a good start. How eating clean can help you save more green. And it may soon be against the law for some teens and kids to have social media accounts. How one country plans to ensure companies abide by the mandate. More than half of working adults expect to rely on Social Security benefits to pay for necessary expenses when they retire. But in a new survey, nearly three quarters are concerned their promised benefits won't be available when they hit retirement age. American workers have previously said they feel behind on their retirement savings. Only about half believe they'll be able to save as much as they'll need with a financial outlook for Social Security. Adopting a plant-based diet might not only be good for your health, but also good for your wallet. A recent study found ignoring the meat aisle at the market can save you hundreds of dollars a year. Scientists found those in a fully plant-based diet had a 25% decrease in their daily meal cost, compared to 19% in the Mediterranean diet. Researchers say those following a vegan diet save nearly $3 a day in food costs. That equates to nearly $900 a year in grocery bills.
The annual membership fee for BJ's Wholesale Club is increasing for the first time in seven years. The new basic plan is increasing by $5 to $60 a year. The most expensive tier, called Club Plus, is increasing $10 to $120 per year total. The new rates go into effect January 1st. Competitor Costco also recently hiked fees. Sam's Club last raised its membership prices in 2022. American Airlines is rolling out new technology to crack down on people who try to cut the line before boarding their boarding group is called. Now, the American Airlines has nine boarding groups ranging from first class customers to people who purchase the least expensive tickets. Starting today, customers who try to scan a boarding pass before their group is called will hear a two note sound and be turned away from the gate. She developed a chatbot that was supposed to help children. Now the founder of an AI startup faces criminal charges for wire fraud. Well, the International Criminal Court issued warrants for Israeli and Hamas leaders following the 13-month-long war. What's expected to happen next? And here we have a look at your NC Education lottery numbers. Renee and I will be right back. Shot in 4K ultra high definition. Your number one source for local news. WRAL News. Coverage you can count on. A Raleigh woman was arrested on federal charges, accused of lying to investors and using the money to buy a house and pay for her wedding. Joanna Smith Griffin developed an AI chatbot designed to increase school engagement with K through 12 students and their parents. WRAL's Noah Klein is here now with the charges she's facing, Noah. Jeff, take a look. This is Joanna Smith Griffin. She was featured in Forbes 30 Under 30 as a leader in the educational field, now facing federal wire fraud and identity theft charges. She founded All Here Education, Inc. That's an artificial intelligence tech company. It created this. It's Ed the Chatbot. A federal indictment unsealed this week accuses her of claiming that the platform was being used in major school systems like New York and Atlanta, when in fact they were in neither. Documents also say she told investors that her company had generated $3.7 million when in reality it had just $11,000 in revenue. The indictment says she was able to get over $10 million in additional investment, which she decided to spend on herself. The New York Times reports when confronted, Smith Griffin, Smith Griffin created an email address that she used to pose as a financial consultant and send fake documents to investors. Later that month, she was fired by the company's board of directors. And happening right now in the WRAL Live Center, some really sad news to report. Two Palm Beach County deputies were killed and a third is fighting for his life in the hospital right now. This uh, is a live picture from one of our affiliates down in Palm Beach. This is outside the hospital where that third officer is fighting for his life, St. Mary's Medical Center. Uh, we we want to show you aerial footage of this terrible crash that happened. It shows three damaged motorcycles on the ground next to this SUV, which also had very heavy front and damage. At least a dozen law enforcement officers were on scene there. Uh, one trauma hawk medical he helicopter took that injured deputy to St. Mary's Hospital. The Florida Highway Patrol says they are leading this investigation. They are scheduled to give an update on the incident at four o'clock this afternoon. But again, two officers killed, one fighting for his life right now. Today, you can learn about the future of the former DMV headquarters site on Newburn Avenue in Raleigh. City staff will be there until 2 o'clock today to meet with people and answer their questions. The city bought the site from the state in June. It plans to demolish the buildings and use the property for what it calls community-driven development. It's happening in connection with the Newburn Station area plan. We were able to gather some initial feedback um, from residents. Uh, affordable housing is the top choice that people have been mentioning to us, but people also want a community space. And they're still in the lengthy phase of gathering community opinions before major decisions about the property's future get set in stone. The existing building is set to be demolished sometime next summer. The International Criminal Court issued arrest warrants today for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, his former defense minister, and Hamas officials. The warrants accuse them of war crimes and crimes against humanity since war erupted in October of 2023. NBC's Raf Sanchez reports from Tel Aviv. 
The International Criminal Court today taking the major step of issuing an arrest warrant for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. They say there are reasonable grounds to believe that the Israeli leader committed war crimes in Gaza by denying humanitarian aid to the civilian population and ordering direct attacks against civilians. Now, those are allegations Netanyahu denies. The court also issuing warrants for Israel's now former defense minister, Yoav Gallant, as well as the military chief of Hamas, Mohammed Deif, who Israel says has been killed already. Both of those men also accused of war crimes. Israeli politicians from really across the political spectrum erupting in anger at these arrest warrants, which they say unfairly target the democratic leaders of the only Jewish state. But the court says that between the beginning of the war on October 7th and the middle of May of this year, Israel engaged in widespread war crimes, including using starvation as a weapon of war. It is unlikely that we will see Netanyahu actually arrested anytime soon, but this does mean he is now in the same infamous club as Vladimir Putin, a major world leader wanted for alleged war crimes. It's also not clear now whether he could travel to Europe or other places that are signatories to the International Criminal Court without potentially facing arrests. That may mean no more trips to London, no more trips to Berlin, no more trips to Paris. Both the Biden administration and officials around President-elect Trump have spoken out against these arrest warrants, which they say are unfair, but it did not deter judges at the court from going ahead and issuing them. Raf Sanchez, NBC News, Tel Aviv. Students in Ukraine gathered to honor those lost in the war with Russia with a candle vigil. The students lit 659 candles to honor the children who've died. The ceremony coincided with World Children's Day. The school's director says she hopes the ceremony will show the world the severity of war. Wake County is updating its policy for identifying signs of bullying and other concerning behavior in schools. The district's threat assessment teams have been in place for three years. Data from last year shows 1,751 reports were made and investigated last year, similar to the year before. The schools have not released the outcome of those investigations. Leaders are making tweaks to the current policies to align with a new state law that requires all public schools to have teams like this. A uh, bill to more than double the size of North Carolina's private school voucher program is now law. The Senate voted to override the governor's veto. This will cover private school vouchers for 54,000 students who are currently on the waiting list. It will cost nearly half a billion dollars more this year and each year in the future. The new law also requires sheriffs in North Carolina to cooperate with immigration and customs enforcement. People in Durham can share their thoughts on the city's budget priorities over dinner tonight. This fall, the city has been hosting community conversations to better understand how taxpayers want their money spent. The events are by registration only and include a free meal and childcare on site. Tonight's meeting is the sixth of this kind. It will include a Spanish speaking presentation. Previous discussions have covered topics such as affordable housing, public safety, infrastructure and workforce development. UNC Chapel Hill will share a little over $20 million with its athletes next year. Universities nationwide are doing this now because of new NCAA rules. UNC's athletic director says to pay for this, fans could see more corporate sponsorships, ticket fees, and cost cutting. But nothing is official yet. The next cancer-fighting treatment might not come in the form of medication, but a virus. The properties of COVID that help shrink tumors. And one country is making it illegal for kids and teens to be on social media. How it's holding social media companies accountable. Our team is working to bring you exclusive stories. For coverage you'll find only on WRL. Visit WRL.com and search only.
happening right now in the WRL Live Center. Some major breaking news right now. Matt Gates is withdrawing his name from consideration for attorney general under President elect Donald Trump. He just posted this to X saying there is no time to waste on a needless protracted Washington scuffle. I will be withdrawing my name from consideration to serve as attorney general. I remain fully committed to see that Donald J. Trump is the most successful president. I will forever be honored that he nominated me to lead the Department of Justice. Uh, Gates has been facing allegations of sexual misconduct. Just yesterday, the House Ethics Committee Republicans, they voted against releasing the panel's long-running investigation into him. He has maintained his innocence. A new study suggests coronavirus could offer hope in the battle against cancer. Early stage research at Chicago's Northwestern Medicine found immune cells from the COVID-19 virus showed the potential to attack cancer cells and shrink tumors. Researchers say the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which causes COVID, is made up of a molecule that is found in all living cells. That molecule triggered the development of a unique type of immune cell with anti-cancer properties. The cell was effective against melanoma, lung cancer, breast cancer, and colon cancer. A Canadian teenager infected with bird flu has mutations in key areas that could help the virus spread more easily in humans. However, scientists say there's no indication that the mutated virus has traveled beyond that patient. The infected patient is in critical but stable condition. Health officials say the teenager was exposed to pets inside and outside the house, including dogs, cats, and some reptiles, but no birds. Doctors say this is not the same strain that is transmitting in dairy cattle in the U.S. 53 bird flu cases in the U.S. have been identified in humans. The Australian government has proposed a ban on children under 16 from using social media and will hand down huge fines to companies that don't comply. A full list has not been released, but the ban is expected to apply to TikTok, X, Instagram and Snapchat. Supporters say the bill is a long overdue measure to hold tech companies accountable for their impact on children. Critics say the proposed ban will reduce teen access to support networks. All right, listen up, Wicked fans. No singing allowed. A movie chain issued a warning to those people. We'll tell you when theaters will allow moviegoers to sing along with their favorite tunes. But Jeff, what if I want to defy gravity? Mm. I'll have to do it on my own time. Plus, follow the Yellow Brick Road. Seriously, we'll take you to a city that plans to honor the man who penned the story that started it all. Imagine driving down the highway and all of a sudden you are under a big tractor trailer. It's called an underride crash. Mm -hmm. And as you see here, and it happens more than you think in North Carolina. A local mom lost two of her young daughters in one of these terrifying crashes. That was in 2013 right there. And since then, she has made preventing similar tragedies her life's work. She's testified before Congress, pushing for stricter requirements. She says the technology exists. There are devices that can be attached to a truck to prevent a car from going under. Her question is, why are they not in use? Very frustrating. The anger continues. It's it's hard to get to peace when when there's so much. I don't know how people sleep at night when they allow this to continue. One of the engineers who found what he believes to be a solution is right here in the triangle. He's an NC State grad named Aaron Kiefer. He designed a device that goes around the bottom of a tractor trailer to prevent a car from going under. How have trucking companies received your product? I'd say there's been a lot of adversity from the trailer manufacturers. And your product costs a couple thousand dollars. That's not that much in the scheme of things for big companies. Why do you think there's been so much resistance to adopt this technology? That's a good question. I feel like there's not been much support from the manufacturers of trailers for this type of technology. And something it does come down to the cost. It's not a cost that a company is going to voluntarily incur, and that's why they want Congress to mandate these devices. Tonight at 6, we'll share the data on how often these crashes are happening in North Carolina. We also put that device to the test to see how well it works, making our roads safer tonight at 6. 
Well, we are ready to get into the holiday spirit. Join WRL this weekend for a local holiday tradition. It's the 80th annual Raleigh Christmas Parade. Join us this Saturday for dazzling floats, festive music, and of course, Santa himself. The live holiday event starts at 9 a.m. on WRAL. We should have beautiful sunshine for that, and it's going to be dry and seasonal. We'll put yeah, it that way. Yeah, I, we're, we're going to get into the feels, <laughs> yeah, right, for, right. The, for the season. This is the gardener of the WRS Severe Weather Center. Sunshine like today. Yeah, y'all are making me laugh over there. Y'all are not even going to be able to see me, but I'm going to be, you know, like eyes just peeking out of all the clothes that I'm going to be wearing on Saturday. So just a heads up right now. Um, <laughs> it will be nice and sunny like it is right now, but boy, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be chilly. Not quite as cold as tonight, but chilly for sure. Fayville, Apex, Raleigh, all looking beautiful. It's Chapel Hill. Looking off to the west, you can see a bit of cloud cover. We talked about that just a little while ago, that we may see a round of clouds right around the time of the evening commute, and that will be the cold front that will usher in even colder air. So that's why we have a freeze watch in effect. It may be that it becomes a freeze warning by the time we get to our evening newscast, so watch for that starting at 4 o'clock. Temperatures will be in the upper 20s to low and mid 30s, depending on where you are. We'll go over it one more time because, uh, you know, you can't you just can't look at it too much, right? 32 in Wilson, 31 in Rocky Mount and Lewisburg, 33 Goldsboro, 31 Roxboro, 33 South Hill, 32 in Siler City. Really all of our towns on the north half easily going to be right there near freezing. A little warmer in the south, Rayford 34, Fayetteville 35, 34 in Clinton, but 33 in Smithfield, 32 in Sanford and, and Robbins. So even some of our southern counties, some of our southern towns are likely to be right down there around freezing. And if we do drop that low, that'll be the coldest that we've seen so far this season. It is breezy out there this afternoon. Our winds are gusting to 26 in Durham and Raleigh, 21 in Fayetteville and Southern Pines, 19 in Roxborough, 18 in South Hill. It will still be a little bit breezy, probably not this windy tomorrow morning. Um, and that will, of course, uh, make it feel extra cold with the wind chill. Gusting right now, of course, 20 to 25. We'll see that again Friday and Saturday. By Sunday, our pattern starts to change a little bit, a little less windy and a little bit warmer. Our wind chill for tomorrow morning, really chilly. 32 in Fayetteville and Clinton, 29 in Durham and South Hill, 30 in Southern Pines, 28 in Roxborough. That's what it will feel like when you step out the door tomorrow at 7 a.m. But on Saturday, when you step out the door at 7 a.m. to head down to the Christmas Parade in Raleigh, it'll feel like upper 30s to low 40s, 40 in Durham and Raleigh. It'll feel like 39 in Fayetteville and 41 in South Hill. So that's still really chilly, but just not quite as bitterly cold as what we'll see tomorrow morning. And all this cold could bring some snow as well. As a matter of fact, it looks like it's about to start snowing up in West Virginia. As we get through the day tomorrow, we'll end up with some snow along the uh, spine of the Appalachians in North Carolina as well. Take a look at the snow potential, and it's anywhere from maybe one to three inches, especially in our northern counties. And then up here uh, in some of the higher elevation of West Virginia, where some of those ski resorts are, that could be as much as a foot plus. Wind chill for the Christmas parade on Saturday at around, say, eight or nine o'clock, about 40 degrees. One thing that helps a lot, find the sunny side of the street, um, get there a little bit early and see if you can figure out which side of the street is going to be sunny. Tree lighting Saturday evening will also be chilly. Temperatures will be in the mid 40s around 6 to 7 o'clock on Saturday evening when we'll be lighting the tree in Durham and Fitton and in Raleigh. Uh, some travel impacts as we look ahead to next week. It's pretty warm to start the week, but then we may have a couple of storms that develop that could cause some problems for travel. Some rain across uh, parts of the Midwest and deep south and some high wind possible around our viewing area. Right now, our Thanksgiving preview looks like like highs will be in the 50s with a chance of rain. We still have a long way to go, but again, kind of watching that change from some warmer temperatures Monday and Tuesday to a little bit cooler on Wednesday and Thursday with the potential for some showers. Thanks, Elizabeth. Some moviegoers are getting a stark message from a theater chain. Simmer down now. <laughs> the warning AMC is issuing on the eve of a release of a highly anticipated movie. Yeah, that's where Jeff every day simmer down now. <laughs> <laughs> now here's a look at last night's winning Powerball numbers. Just kidding. Simmer down. It doesn't work. <laughs> We wrap things up with a look at a few of the headlines we're following for you today. New warrants reveal what police found inside a home in Cary where three people were killed. Police found Xavier Holton in a bathroom of the Cary home he shared with his mother. A gun was in the sink next to his body. Xavier's mother, Erica Holton, and his girlfriend, 19-year-old Amina Michelle Guy, were found shot to death somewhere else in the house. And a man identifying himself as Erica Holton's husband suggested Xavier could be a suspect in the shooting.
In the last 90 minutes, Durham police provided an update on what happened before and after an officer shot a 16 year old. Chief Patrice Andrews said after reviewing the body camera footage, the investigation so far does not suggest any wrongdoing from the officer who fired shots. He is on administrative leave, which is standard. Rebuild NC is now in search of a new leader. That's the state agency in charge of helping hurricane survivors with storm recovery and rebuilding. Laura Hogshead was fired from her position with the State Office of Recovery and Resiliency last night. Hogshead has been criticized for her leadership and the program's slow progress. The highly anticipated movie Wicked hits theaters tomorrow. And if you were looking forward to belting out Defying Gravity, think again. AMC Theaters will play a 30-second advisory before the movie, reminding people that silence is golden. And the ad includes, quote, no singing and no wailing. However, fans can take part in sing-along screenings starting on Christmas Day. Part one of the film hits theaters tomorrow, and part two is set to open next November. Renee's waiting till Christmas. <laughs> the people of Dell City, Oklahoma, plan to honor the author of The Wizard of Oz in a very unique way. In the early 1900s, about 10,000 yellow bricks were laid down through the New York town where Oz author L. Frank Baum was born. The bricks were later pulled up and stored in the Oz safe rooms in Oklahoma. And get this, the company builds tornado shelters. The company plans to breathe new life into the bricks by installing them near their building. Our pet of the day is a terrier mix with little legs and a big heart from Hope Animal Rescue. Meet Maybelline or May May. This four-year-old loves nothing more than to cuddle and ask for rubs all day. Maybelline is currently living with another dog and has done great with him given a slow integration period. She struggled with initial meetings with unfamiliar dogs and requires slow and controlled introductions. May might thrive in a home that's low key. To learn more about her, contact Hope Animal Rescue. Raleigh is working to keep participants safe during this year's Christmas parade. And coming up on WRL News at 4, the additional changes happening after requiring people to sign a waiver. NBC News Daily is next on WRL. Your next local news update in 30 minutes. You can get updates on breaking news anytime with our WRL News app. Have a good one. Keep watching WRL News over the air channel 34 and Spectrum channel 1257.